In this video, I'm installing the final components of our electrical system on the boat, which will allow us to live completely off-grid and avoid those high inflation energy prices. I'm getting a bit of help from Sail Hub's Christopher Foster, aka Geordie Boy. We're going to be installing new solar panels and 900 amp hours of lithium Super B batteries. There's going to be some wiring, some cable cutting, crimping, and a lot of fluid loss in the form of armpit discharge. It was pretty hot. If this video inspires you to do your own boat work and save some cash, amazing. But don't copy what I do, I am not a professional. Morning internet, we were up bright and early this morning. I fell asleep at two o'clock, knackered, and woke up to what could only be described as a miracle appearing on the back of my boat. Stainless guy turned up, 40 minutes past six. It's a bit early, but Appreciated it nonetheless. Woke up to Christopher Foster here morning, internet. on the Siggies at 6.40. Loving life. He's on his second coffee now. I made him a brew, which is sunk. That's gone. He's had Having a couple a nice of biscuits. Morning. Nice and chilled. Biscuits stored inside the, uh, the backy bucket. It's a good name, actually, the backy bucket. It's all right, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the uh, solar panels up. Oops, sorry, mate. They're up here. Need to get them wired in. I think he needs to come back and grind that off. That doesn't look too pretty. So this is what was wrong. So he's extended this a little bit and fixed it up and it's looking all right now. He needs to clean up these welds, but that's looking fine. And this is Manolis. He's come back and this is the internet Manolis. Oh, okay. Internet, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> so he's got the, uh, the netting up here, which is looking good. Manolis. Finishing the net Manolis. <laughs> I connected two of the middle ones just so I can um, test them out to make sure they're working. They are. Um, so I've got this panel plugged in and I've got these two which I need to plug in now. So these back panels here, the new ones, they're going in series. These two, the old ones, are in parallel. So this is 500 watts and then this is I think 700 watts here. Not that good at counting. Three times one seven five. I've actually thought about it. Um, so yeah, that's what these are here. So I'm connecting these in series. So basically, positives are connecting up to minuses, and we're connecting them all together. Um, reason for this is if these were set at twelve volts and they went, if I connected those in parallel and sent them to the MPPT charger, I'd need really thick wires because there'd be a lot of amps going through. Um, so I thought rather than do that, I'll connect them in series. And then I've got um, one set in parallel and then one set in series. So if the series ones are getting blocked a little bit, then at least the parallel, parallel ones will work better. Uh, and the series ones are actually right back. They're sticking right out the transom as well. So the likelihood of them getting blocked by the, um, by the sales is less. Um, so yeah, that's what I've done positives and negatives to all of those things whatever that's what i've gone for so um yeah i'm now going to get these all hooked up in series so i can get these running into the um running into the mppts also Meanwhile, back at the back cave. <laughs> this is like I've come in. I've just come into like pure darkness. Pitch black. Our new Swedish friends actually just turned up wanting a drink and I had to turn them down so they don't have any electricity. No. Right, let me turn that off, see if you can see my face. It looks like we're caving here. Oh, you can't see anything. Right, looks I've got there. all the lithium stuff ready to go. I've got the first battery plugged in. Oh, mate, show them the system. Look at all those cables. Don't look at the bottom cables, just look at the top cables. <laughs> So the boy races dream. Yeah, so I'm now about to turn the lithium batteries on. So this boat is officially going to be powered by lithium in one second. Yeah. <laughs> if this goes boom, I'll laugh. Ooh, the Starship Enterprise. Look at that, look. Right. Got water pumps going. Got ambient lighting. Have a look at this. Even the guitar matches on Voyager, eh? 
That's it. Oh, wait, man, we've got kebab up here and stop fucking with this. Yeah, right, let's eat kebab. <laughs> Never mind that lithium rubbish, I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody starving. Anyway, that's it. Lithium power online. <laughs> Yo. Yo. So, what I'm doing now, so this is my battery system at the moment. <clears throat> so, basically, I've got my inverter here. The inverter needs a battery to work, or it needs 12 volts coming in from somewhere. So I've connected my old solar panels because they were already wired up there. So you can see now, um, right, the batteries are actually full, so that's why it's not bringing in any charge. Um, but when I can actually disconnect the battery and just run the boat directly off the solar panels because they go into the bus bars rather than going into the batteries. So that confused me for a little while. I disconnected the battery and all the 12 volts are still on. I was like, okay what's going on here but i was getting like eight amps uh, straight to the bus bar so that's fine um so what i need to do now before i can close up the bottom and um start loading these batteries in i've got my fuse here which goes from the dc to dc i need to link this into there then the next thing i need to do is run a cable from here uh, down into the DC to DC, which is there. Excuse the mess, it looks like crap, I don't care. Because what that basically does is when my house batteries are charged, which hopefully they will be all the time, that will then send any spare power through the DC to DC back down to the, um, bat uh, the engine start batteries. So, you know, if we're having a day where the house batteries are topped up, but I'm getting some through the solar panels, the DC to DC will then charge the engine starter batteries which is cool, um, although if I wanted to I could actually start the engine off the lithium so I just don't want to do that because that's probably not smart. So yeah that's what I need to do now, so I've got a couple more wires, I need to run the wire from there down to there, I need to then um, connect that one up to that one, then I can close that and hopefully just start messing around with getting those batteries in. I've got I need to do a little bit of electronic work to get these all connected in place. So I've got these battery switches and then you need to hook them all together with these. These have got some type of special name, these types of wires. I can't remember what they're called. They're called something, I know that. Um, so I've then got to get all those things plugged in, which I think I can do. Only problem is I don't have a big crimping tool. My mate Mark, who has this sweet little Jeep, I'll put a video of that sweet little Jeep in right now. So Mark turned up this morning chasing the stainless guy, as most people are in this yard. And he turned up in this thing. <laughs> turned up, he said, let's go find the Nazis and kill them. No, he didn't. This is Mark. Hi. Chris. There you go, mate. Cheers, buddy. This is the golden moment. Let's see if she starts. How do you start this thing? Get in the truck first. The what? Stick it in the truck. Too many gear levers, man. I think that, that's oh, your really diff, isn't it? Here's it. That's that's the magic. It's like a magic yeah. wand. Mechanically a genius, this man. He's like this with the higher cars, come to think of it. Did he tell you he lost his car in Athens for three hours yesterday? No. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't very, uh, <laughs> very useful. <laughs> Um, so he has, uh, he's got a crimping tool which he lent me 
And I then went and tried to buy, to buy one from the shop and no one has got any crimping tools for like 50 millimeter wire. Uh, so I've got one ordered anyway. I've got one at home, um, but obviously I don't know. I didn't want to bring it with me. So I, I now have two. Um, so I've got, he's, his wife is going to bring it, but then I've got, I'm, 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 I'm mumbling. There's no need to forget this. Anyway, I'm going to get on with this now. Yo, so I now need to calculate how much wire I need to go in between each battery. And I'll explain what I'm doing. So because I've got three batteries down below and then I've got three batteries up above, um, I've got basically two separate banks, one down there, one here. However, they're all connected in um, parallel. They're all one battery bank. Now, the wires in between each battery need to be the same length. However, because I've got one bank lower down than the other, I now need to make all the batteries have the same length cables. However, one of those cables, which joins those two batteries together, the three below to the three above, is gonna be quite long. So all of them need to be the same length. So what I've done, I've got one battery down there, which I've just plugged in this random old battery cable that I've got. I've basically run it up to here, put a little mark on there, so the end of that paper there is how long this cable needs to be and then that means that how that is how long every cable needs to be here now uh, so I'm going to calculate that I'm going to have to times that by um, seven for each one I think that's right yeah seven <laughs> and then um, I'm going to go and buy that stuff then I'm going to get them all cut to that size so the only slightly annoying thing <laughs> about this is that in between each battery I'm going to have a big loop which is fine as long as I don't do that Chris said it creates like an electromagnet, I think, or something, which could be cool. I could make some type of Iron Man suit on board here. Why not? So uh, as long as I don't loop them around like that, it should be it should be safe. It should be fine. Um, that's also what Super B recommended I do as well, and they seem to know what they're talking about. They make these big, beautiful things. Um, so yeah, that's next on the list. Cutting a bunch of cable, getting these batteries in. I've then got to program them with the battery monitors. So I'm gonna have to put each one in separately. I need to program that battery, give it a name, connect it up. Then it recognizes that they're all a family. They're not just standalone little batteries wandering around in the battery universe, getting home with their own thing. Simply there to fend for themselves. No, they're part of a family, they're a system. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing next. Yo, so about to cut the cables for all the batteries. I've got this stuff, which is 70 millimeter square. I don't know what that means in American size. Big. Um, so I need to make five at 370 and then one at 300. I've got my little cheese block here that I'm using for cutting everything. This is my workbench, ginormous polystyrene block. It's got my disc cutter, got this, got my safety goggles, Ray Bonds. And then I've got all my little terminal ends here. So I've got these and I've got my big crimper. This is a big bugger, it goes up to 240. Can't imagine you could do that with your hands. Maybe you can, who knows. So cool, got all this stuff. Got my heat gun there in my pocket. I have a bunch of these little heat shrink stuff. So I'm gonna do this outside as well. The boat is boiling, so I don't wanna heat it up any more than I need to. So um, cool, gonna get cutting these. Cool, right, so that's all these cut. So I've got two smaller ones which are going from the batteries to the bus bars. And then these are all the ones which are going in between the batteries. I forgot a Stanley knife. I need to chop the ends off. So I'm gonna go and get that. Right, so I'm now getting the terminals on all the ends of these. The problem I've found is that these, although these are 70 mil, which is, which is made for these, uh, they're actually a little bit too small. So I have to cut a few strands off, which is really annoying. Um, but these are the biggest ones I can find around as well. I couldn't get the next size up. I actually think the next size up would have been too big. So I'm having to shave a few and move away. There you go, then you can see it. I'm gonna have to shave a few strands off before I um, tighten these up. That's life.
cool so I'm just going to do one and show you because I don't want to show you all of them <laughs> but this is basically what I'm doing so I've got one of these cut I've purposefully attached these on so it's got a slight bend which twists the copper inside rather than putting it on completely flat and then bending them over which would basically start pulling on the copper wires I've actually crimped them in like that because when they connect they're going to have to droop down the side of the battery if you can see it's like that a little bit so I'm just going to get the heat shrink on now I'll show you what I'm doing here Cool, that is one done, all nice, 12 to go. Yo, so I'm about to get... Bit annoying. Um, right, so I'm about to get all my cables connected. Here they all are, all cut to size, bent in the right shapes. So I'm gonna start loading loading them up in here and getting them all connected. Right, I've got them in. My apologies, I'm bare chested. It's bloody boiling on this boat. Actually, let's see what temperature it is. Um, internal temperature, 37.2 degrees. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's well over 100. That's wild. Jesus. Um, yeah, that's why I'm dripping. Cool, so they're all in. These are all hooked up. This is the bottom one. Those are all in there, nice and tight. Negative is connected at the bottom, positive is connected on the top. I've got my two sides here taped up so I don't murder myself. And uh, yeah, now I just need to get these communications uh, cables in there. So I'm gonna do that now. Right, that was knackering. That was, I don't know how much water I've lost. I know I need to drink some. <laughs> that was absolutely exhausting. The temperature inside this boat is 39 degrees. And the sun's gone down. It's like 7.30 and it's 39 degrees in the boat. I don't know, I don't know how to describe that for Americans. I don't know Fahrenheit, but it's fucking hot. Um, so they're in. They're in there, and the power in the boat. They're currently getting a little bit of charge, which is cool. The only thing I haven't done on these yet is connected the touch displays, um, which I'm gonna do when I speak to a um, technician. So basically you've got like a CAN bus system that goes with these batteries that is, uh, is actually quite cool if you don't mess it up in the first instance. Um, so it's this stuff here, you get, a monitoring kit which is this crazy looking thing which inconveniently you can only use on windows otherwise you have to get a mac emulator which is this whole problem um oh man my internet is so shit here so yeah once i've uh, spoke to the technician i've downloaded a windows emulator for the mac um they do actually need to sort this out so like you can download a really good app for actually monitoring the batteries, but you can't do any configuration with the battery setup within that app. So it's probably something they need to work on a little bit. They're in, looking good. Literally just want to sit down and do nothing. So that's me sat in my seat. I've got the lithiums in and I'm about to have a cig and a cold drink. Jesus, have I, am I coming out in like red hives? I think I am. I think I'm literally coming out in red hives. I'm not hot. Holy shit. Alright, I need some cold water. Bye.